the last chapter of 1 Corinthians, I mean 2 Corinthians is chapter 12 and 13. Is, and it kind of goes along with what we just went through this morning. Because in, in 1 Corinthians, I mean 2 Corinthians chapter 12, look at this. Verse 1, it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast, and I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a one who was caught up to the third heaven. Listen, there's three heavens. The atmosphere around us, this, the sky, the clouds, that's the first one. The celestial, that's where the stars are at. The third heaven is paradise, heaven itself, where our loved ones in the Lord are. There's three heavens. But he goes on and says, look at this. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, how he was caught up into the paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. Again, he's still talking about the problems and issues he was going through, you know, where they were doubting who he was. He says, he says, for though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool. For I will speak the truth, but I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. Look at verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of what? To buffet me. Lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. So Paul was being, uh, Paul was saying, look, all this suffering that I've been going through, because I'm preaching this gospel. And the devil is, and, and so the devil sent a messenger my way. Everywhere that I go, things are coming against me. It seems like, some of you Christians, it seems like I'm trying to serve God. All of a sudden, this breaks down. So other stuff happens here, or this happens here, here, whatever. Well, guess what? He's, he's trying to distract you. He's trying to get you away from the faith that you have. Just like she was saying, you are to receive what God gave you this morning, but don't be surprised for, for, for the enemy's attacks trying to get you away from what you believe. So, so Paul says, the Lord sent me, a, not the Lord, the enemy sent me a, notice, it was a messenger from Satan, not a messenger from God. And to buffet wasn't mean, I'm gonna, he's going to take me to crack a barrel. In other words, he came to be, beat me. So everywhere Paul was going, he had persecution. They were coming against him because of his stand of preaching this gospel. It was for the sake of Christ. So, so, so God told him, so Paul, Paul saying, Lord, take this away from me. And I can prove it to you, I don't have time. But Numbers 33, God says, if you don't get rid of those people, they're going to be thorns in your side. It's referring to people. Have you heard, anybody ever been a pain in the neck in your life? Anybody ever been a pain in, don't look at your spouse, all right? Don't look at your spouse. Anybody been a pain in the neck? Right? That's what he's saying. These, everywhere he was going, this spirit was stirring up people that were persecuting Paul. And Paul was saying, Lord, I'm tired of it. Everywhere I go, it's, it's a ruckus. It's like a, a, this spirit is following and starting ruckuses everywhere. And these people are coming against me. And God, said, God told him in the Old Testament, when you don't know what a thorn in the flesh is, look at what the Bible says. If you look in the Old Testament, God's saying, if you don't deal, if you don't, you know, deal with these people, they're going to be a thorn in your side. In other words, another way of saying it, a pain in the neck. And that's what Paul was saying, that, that they were becoming a pain in the neck. And notice this. Notice the result. He says, lest I should be exalted above measure, uh, what? He says, a messenger of Satan was given me. Some people interpret this to mean that Paul was getting into pride. I don't, I don't want, in other words, God, that the devil sent a, a spirit so I wouldn't get into pride. No, that wasn't the issue at all. It wasn't at all. You know what it was? The enemy knew if Paul's revelation of the gospel of the grace of God is exalted and what the revelation Paul had, if that's preached, it's going to set people free. So that's why the ruck is the persecution. So notice what happens. Here's what the Lord tells him. Verse 8, concerning this thing I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. It wasn't sickness. It wasn't disease. Notice what he told him in verse 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect 
in weakness. Here's a great example. Pastor Lucy was feeling weak in her body. Yet God used her this morning to minister to people. I don't know how many times when I didn't feel ready to preach or minister, I, I feel I had things ready where God has used me in spite of me because it's not about me. It's about Him in me. It's about Him in you. And it's Him living His life through you, ministering to you. So God's telling, see, God's telling Paul, look, Paul, those things that are coming against you, see, because Paul's praying, I want all these troubles to stop. I don't want any more persecution. I want to be able to preach this gospel without any trouble, Lord. Well, guess what God would have to do? He'd have to, he'd have to kill the people. And God's not going to kill them. So here's, when it talks about suffering for Christ, it's suffering for your stand, for your faith in God. You're going to have, you know what I'm saying, there's things that are going to come against you because you believe in Jesus, because you have faith in Jesus. You, you are a target to the enemy because of your faith. And so there's some things, so, so God's telling Paul, hey, hey, my grace, come on now. Now here, grace is God's unmerited favor. It's his unmerited favor. So he's saying, because of my unmerited favor, I'm going to strengthen you. My grace is sufficient for you to handle that manfully, the Amplified says. Yeah. Amen? In other words, I'm going to grace you, and you're going to be able to take it, and you're going to be able to keep standing. And guess what? When the fight's over, you're going to still be standing. The only fight we have is the fight of staying in rest, in faith. Amen? And that's, and that's what a wrestling match is. You're trying to get the other person off their stand. Right. We're standing on God's word. Yes. And see, so he says, look at he says, he says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So Paul got a revelation. Okay, therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now infirmities is not sickness. He's talking about the weaknesses that he feels when things are coming against them and he don't know what to do. Sometimes he says, man, I don't know if we're going to make it. We're going to die here. Lord, if you don't move. So in other words, it's not trusting in yourself but trusting him. He's the one that set you free. You can't, if, listen, if you could have been set free from the drugs on your own, you would have done it a long time ago. You can't. Only He can, and He's the one that sets you free, whether this morning, as you believe God's Word. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the one that sets you free. And that's what He's saying, Paul's saying, when I'm weak, look, let's keep reading, look at this, we're almost done. I'm, I'm going to boast that the power of Christ may rest upon me, therefore, look at verse 10, it, I take pleasure in infirmities, and listen, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses. Come on now. See, a lot of you are going through stuff because of your belief, because of your faith in Jesus. That's why Peter said, like I said last week, don't be, don't think it's strange, brethren. The fiery trial, which is to trial, as if some strange thing happened. Amen? But you're going through things your other brothers and sisters are suffering through. Amen? But God's given us the victory, though. We got to keep standing. Amen? We got to keep standing on His promises. And then He says, he says, uh, uh, therefore I take uh, uh, rejoice, pleasure in these things. For, for Christ, listen, it's for Christ's sake. Yeah. Amen? Not for you doing, you know what I'm saying, like the guy that says, wait, man, I was in prison for 20 years and I put up with it. Yeah, but you did something wrong. Right. You deserve to be in prison. Yeah. But he says, when you take your stand for Jesus and you do it, and you know what I'm saying, and you keep your stand, he says, you can rejoice. Notice what he says. He says, for when I am weak, that's when what I am strong why because he's strong in me he flows so Paul is saying okay I see what's happening when I realize that it's not about me when I realize that I gotta stop trusting in my own ability stop trusting in my own strength to, to help myself stop trusting in my own ability to, to to deliver myself stop trusting in myself to set myself free if I'll just admit it Lord I can't I can't do it but you can so Lord, I may not be able to do it, but you can. That's why the Bible says, I can do all things, not by yourself, through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Oh, oh, if it had not been for the Lord, I would have fallen. One song says, if it had not been for the Lord, I'd just drift away. I just, you know, I wouldn't have made it. Amen. 
So notice, this whole book, I said, the whole two books of Corinthians was about God's grace at work. How does grace work in the believer? And notice how he ends this book. He says, God, I'm going through all these things. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you, son. Amen. And, and it's okay. I'm going to count it all joy. I'm going to rejoice in the midst of these things that I'm suffering for Christ. Why? Because why? When I'm weak, that's when he's strong. When I'm weak, that's when he's strong. If it wasn't for his grace, where would we be? There's a song that this guy sings. It goes like this. Um, where would I be? You only know. I'm glad you see through eyes of love a hopeless case. An empty place, if not for grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I once was lost, but now I'm found. A hopeless case, an empty place. If not for grace, a hopeless case, an empty place. If not for grace, I'm going to tell you something. If it wasn't for the grace of God, where would we be? If it wasn't for the grace of God, just like God demonstrated himself through my wife and ministering like that in, in weakness. His grace float. Amen. Likewise in our lives. When you feel the most, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You want to see God move in your life? Just say, God, Father, I can't. I can't do it on my own. I, I'm going to quit trying to do this on my own. Jesus, just, I trust you. I trust you to do it. Do it through me, Lord. Have your way. You're my life. You're my righteousness. You're my holiness. You're my healing. You're my deliverance. You're my everything. I can't do it on my own. And you know what? That's when you'll move the most. Because now it's his faith that is working in and through you. And not you trying to get something on your own. Amen. Are you seeing that? So I'm going to end there. Shortest message. I think this is the shortest message I've ever that was a miracle right there. You watched two miracles, three miracles, several miracles this morning. I'm serious. I think that's the shortest message ever recorded in manual library. Yeah? Oh, okay. Amen. So listen, read it for yourself. Study it more. Amen. And maybe I'll put it in GLU, then you can listen to the full message. <laughs> Amen. I'll tell you, book of 2 Corinthians was a blessing. Oh yeah, listen, Wednesday night though, if you come, I'll give you the whole. If you come on Wednesday night, I'll give you the whole thing. Plus, you'll get the notes. So if you want to hear the rest, like, like John, or I mean Paul, Paul, what's his name? The rest of the story. Come on Wednesday night. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. We're going to pray. Uh, Ciara's going to be going on a trip to Washington, D.C. for, uh, do you have your shirt? Oh, oh, is it? Oh, that's not your shirt. No, you, I, she has a shirt she's going to wear that has Grace Church on it. Yeah, and GLU. And GLU. All the ones that her. We sponsored her to go to Washington D.C. Go to Washington D.C. for her. Amen. But let's pray. I want to pray over you, and then we're going to pray for her before we dismiss. See, it's only eleven thirty-nine. I should have gone longer. Anyway, no, actually, I'm going to have Pastor Lucy preach after I'm done. So if you want to stay, you got some more. <laughs> hey. Hey, next week, Pastor Lucy's ministry next week, so if you want to come next week. She's got the whole thing. I will not interrupt. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for what you did this morning, Lord. Thank you for touching hearts. Thank you for, yes, for the miracles that we saw today. The healings, the freedoms, the deliverance, the everything that you did. We don't take it for granted. We're so grateful. We're so thankful, Father. We love you. We appreciate you, Father. 
We love you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. It's not about us. It's about you. We give you all the glory and all the praise for all that you did this morning and all that you're going to do for the rest of this week. I pray that our people are going to have a glorious week, Father, that your anointing, your rain is going to fall wherever they go. Your anointing will flow through them as they minister, as they touch somebody. I, I believe this is going to be an awesome week for our people, Lord. They're going to see miracles in, at work, miracles wherever they go. The anointing that's here is going to flow through them. And people are going to be set free, healed, delivered. And they're going to come back next Sunday with testimonies in Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Father, for blessing their week.